Now, chancel repair liability has been rearing its ugly head recently. In fact, Paul Hadjik from Clutton Cox was featured on the BBC News this week because he's an expert in chancel repair liability. In fact, if you go onto Google and search for chancel repair liability, Paul Hadjik from Clutton Cox pops up as one of the foremost experts. Now, what is chancel repair liability all about? Because you're possibly going to be worried about the fact that you may have to pay out tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of pounds to repair your local church's chancel. Doesn't sound very fair? No, it doesn't, because it's all about ancient rules, many, many hundreds of years old. So Paul Hadjik put together this 21 tips guide about chancel repair liability. So let's just start at the beginning. What is a chancel for the first part of our explanation? Well, it's pretty much the east end of a church. It's where the altar is. And what about repairing it? Now, it could cost a lot of money, or is it just about repairing something on the roof? Well, it was thought it used to be nothing more than keeping it watertight and maintaining essential fittings. There was no obligation to provide repair, which would be ornamental and decorative. But this is no longer the case, and now it can be about improvements. But it's all to do with this pre-Reformation 1534 churches in Henry VIII. Now, when Henry VIII dissolved or privatised the monasteries, he also passed on liabilities to the new owners, who became lay rectors. Now, there can be, in the England, up to 5,200 properties, the subject of this liability, although many of them will be responsibly the church commissions and deans of Oxford, Cambridge and Durham universities, as well as the colleges of Winchester. So, let's take a little bit more about the legal side of it. Which act governs the law in relation to chancel repairs? Well, it's the 1932 Chancel Repair Act. So we've got 1500s, then we've got 1932. These are ancient, but they don't necessarily show up on your title deeds, your repair liability. In the majority of cases, they're not there. So, if your property is registered to the land regist registry, will it show up there? No, the same still applies. If there's no entry placed in your deeds by 2013, because of new legislation in 2002, then the liability cannot be enforced against you. So that's a good thing. But who does actually enforce this chance of repair liability anyway? Well, the Chancellor Repair Act gave the power to bring court action if a lay rector failed to repair the chancel of a relevant church to the parochial church council, the PCC, the parochial church council. But who is this lay rector? Well, again, this is complicated, but in essence, the lay rector was in most cases institutions which took on the responsibility of the rector's liability as a result of the dissolution of the monasteries all that time ago. But in some cases, this could also be the person who's assumed the liability handed down with land through the generations. Now, why would a PCC want to do this in this day and age? Well, simply because money is tight. The English heritage refused the PCC a grant because they had failed to exhaust other avenues of finance, i.e. chancel repair liability. They've got to go out there and find the money. Now, will your house necessarily be the only one liable in your particular area? Well, in most cases the liability is joint and several, but the PCC could choose to pursue who they liked. That could be one particular person. Now that person in turn would be able to claim a contribution from all liable parties, but that could be much easier said than done. The worry is that just one registration in an area could be made to pay for the repairs and the improvements. What happens if your house is quite a long way from the church? Doesn't that help? Well, it just really depends on ancient parish boundaries. Normally you would be inside of a church, but you could be up to 30 miles away and there aren't necessarily very good maps. Now the National Archive at Kew has got the most information and there is an online search facility. But a personal search of various historical records could also reveal whether a property would be liable, but this would be time consuming and most likely very expensive. But are there some clues? Well, there are some telltale signs. For example, you should investigate if your house is called rectory, glebe, vicarage or parsons. Are properties in Wales affected as well? Yes, they are, but much less an extent in Wales because of new legislation. Has anyone actually had to pay 
chance to repair liability recently. Yes, they have. The Wallbanks, a very unfortunate family, ended up selling their farmhouse, Glebe Farm, there you go, the clue is in the name, to pay for the repair of the Chancellor of St John the Baptist Church in Aston Cantlow, Warwickshire. The cost of repairs are estimated at 200000 and as much again in legal costs, taking their case all the way up to the House of Lords. Can you invoke the Human Rights Act? Well, you can't, because it was tried in the Wallbank case, and the court rejected the argument <coughs> that the liability was unfair, or an arbitrary tax, as the PCC, PPC is not a public body, and church repairs were a private matter. Now, this does seem somewhat spurious. Will the knowledge of the liability have an effect on the value of your house? Well, the answer to that one is yes, if it's known as a chance of repair liability, and probably not if it's not known that there is. If there's any doubt, can you insure against future liability? Well, the good news is, yes, you can. And it's not necessarily very expensive. It can be very inexpensive. Of course, it's not going to be inexpensive if you know there is a liability already. Now, what happens if the property you're buying could be liable? Well, your conveyancing solicitor can have the property insured for the full amount of the purchase price. Most general legal indemnity insurers will provide cover based on the value of the property, and one such policy is ConveySure from the same company which provides chancel check. The good news is chancel repair liability may have a definitive shelf life through new legislation. The bad news is until then liability could hit you hard. The bit of good news is that you can safely insure where you are in doubt. What we recommend is speak with your conveyancing solicitor and speak with an expert, someone like Paul Hadjik from Clutton Cox. The number there to get in touch with Clutton Cox is on the screen and the email address. So if you want more information about chance repair liability, get in touch with Paul Hadjik at Clutton Cox, who is the expert in England, featured on the BBC, featured on radio, and he is the one who can help you with this tricky subject. Thanks for watching. Check it out on cluttoncox.co.uk for more information on chance repair liability and conveyancing.